Hey, hey, good morning, friends. I hope that you are well. April Woodcock. April Woodcock. Gosh, I can't even remember my name. Uh, April Woodcock here with Touching Clients. Um, good to see everybody. I'm excited today to be talking about blogging. Um, you know, it's uh, blogging is one of those tools that I think as business owners, um, it can be a little bit intimidating. Why? Because it requires us to um, put pen to paper, so to speak. Um, but there is definitely ways nowadays because of AI technology, it's, it's much easier. So today we're going to be talking about getting started with blogging. And uh, I'm going to give you seven tips for creating a successful blog. In the meantime, um, definitely make sure that you are, um, drop a hello in the chat. Would love to, um, would love to, uh, see, looks like I'm having, let's see, it says having an issue. What is having an issue? Let's see. Um, give me one second technology. So we are in uh, StreamYard here and interesting. So. Uh, give me one second. Let me just try something. I just want to make sure. So this is the webinar. However, we are definitely, um, we're streaming to a few different platforms. Uh, Facebook, uh, Facebook, our um, Digital Marketing Academy, as well as our um, website. So let's see. Let's see if that helps. I'm not sure if it does. But anyways, no, well, welcome, everybody. I'm so glad you're here. All right. So just some housekeeping. This is being recorded. Um, if you did sign up as the webinar platform, um, you will definitely get access to the replay. Also, you can see the replay on our um, my LinkedIn profile. If we're not connected, you're welcome to uh, connect with me there or our YouTube channel. Um, and I do want to let you know that I do try to keep it short on Fridays. Um, my goal is to bring to you on Fridays a 30-minute training presentation that you can take with you and uh, take some actionable results. So, hey, Bob, hey, John, let's get started here. I'm going to uh, share my screen. And we are going to get down to business, as they say. All right. Um, looks like you can see my screen. Perfect. So let's get started. Again, my name is April. Um, my name is April Woodcock. I'm with Touching Clients. If you have not been to one of my trainings before, uh, I own a digital marketing agency here in Connecticut, and we help service small to medium-sized businesses with, um, with their digital marketing needs. We offer social media management. We offer email marketing, um, as well as coaching and a variety of other things to help support your business. So I'm really glad you're here. Um, and kind of my format is I do live presentations. Sometimes um, if you have been to um, through Dotto Tech, which is um, I work with Steve Dotto uh, at Dotto Tech and we do hybrid webinars there. But my webinars, I prefer to do them live. Please feel free to ask questions as we go along um, because my goal is for you uh, to help you in any way that I can. All right. So let's talk about blog. So kind of what is the general definition of a blog? Really, it's an online platform and blogs come in a variety of uh, shapes and formats. It's a place for you to post content um, specifically about, um, about information that's gonna help your audience in terms of what you're delivering on your service, your expertise that you're sharing. Um, and really, you know, blogs are helpful for, they're typically added to a website. However, sometimes people will have a standalone blog and that will, that also serves as their website where they're serving and delivering content. Um, but in the end, what content does in this content marketing driven world is um, it really drives, um, peaks curiosity and drives traffic to your website. So the goal is everything that you're doing in kind of the marketing arena is to drive traffic to your website, right? Um, and blogs do a great job of that um, in a variety of ways. And blogs, again, come in all shapes and form. And form. So it could be a video blog where maybe you are doing um, regular videos. Um, a while back, years back, years back now, I used to do um, a video blog, call it vlog, um, called Couch Talk. And it would be short, uh, short, very um, specific tips on aspects of digital marketing. So for example, um, how to create a great subject line. And I would offer like 15 minutes of quick tips. Um, so that was a video blog. Some of you may want to do a visual blog. So if 
if you're a photographer, um, if you are a wedding photographer, you could do um, a video blog, excuse me, a uh, photo blog about your um, about the people that you're serving. You also can offer tips on um, you know lighting and those type of things. And then you can have written blogs. You can have how-to blogs. There's lots of ways that you can use blogging to your advantage. But the ultimate goal is to drive traffic to your website because when you drive traffic to your website, at the end of the day, when people are searching on topics, um, in um, you know, for example, if I'm searching on how to take a great evening photograph. Um, your blog is searchable by Google and Google likes fresh content. So that's going to help you get found and especially on your website. So kind of some of the benefits again are to showcase your skills. You are good at what you, um, at what you do. You know your industry, um, you know your service, you know your product, um, and it's really an opportunity for you to showcase your strengths and your knowledge. Um, that's not to say you're gonna give every tool away in your tool chest, but in content marketing, your goal in blogging especially is to build that know, like, and trust relationship, right? So the more that people understand um, topics and understand that you are a expert in that, the more it's going to drive your um, building your email list. It's also going to drive and it's going to drive and grow your business. It's again, traffic to your website because it's a way to drive people directly to your website. Um, also, it becomes searchable and Google loves fresh content. So that's another thing for you to also consider. It does build those no like and trust um, aspects, and that's something that you always want to consider. So, um, everything that you put out to the universe, and um, you know, example, I actually spoke with somebody um, the other day, and I was kind of working with them on some of their email stuff. And one of the biggest things was they were putting their sales pitch before the no like and trust. And they had a great sales pitch and they're very knowledgeable in their industry, super smarty pants. Um, and one of the things we talked about was you really need to be delivering value. So blogs to deliver value and it's really the first step in warming the relationship. Um, it's just like when you're building your email list, right? A lot of times you'll have a list builder where it might be a checklist or something like that. Um, the goal is to build relationships that no like and trust factor where someone's going to be like, yes, I want to work with this person. It helps bring brand awareness. The more people see your content, um, especially in search results or on social media, uh, it's bringing brand awareness. Also, by building that no like and trust factor, now you're building ambassadors for your brand. So they're going to share your content, which is also a wonderful thing because the more eyes are going to be on your blog, ultimately driving traffic to your website. Uh, it's a great way to build community. Lots of blogging, lots of blog sites um, build a lot of community. One in particular, um, you know, I work a lot in social media, but Social Media Examiner has a blog. That's how they started their business. Um, and really, it has driven a community of trust. It's um, built a community of, they have a social media marketing world every year. It's a big, huge conference where marketers, social marketers come from all over the world. Um, and it's really a specific community. I've made a lot of friends to that community. So it can really drive community with people in the same interests. Um, and then at the end of the day, you can earn money with blogs. We're not going to get into earning money today um, with blogs, but keep in mind that that's always something where you, that you can do, where you can add affiliate links. Um, to your blog. And then obviously if people sign up for your services, that's another way to earn money. Um, but that's a whole nother subject matter of being able to earn money right on your blog based on your traffic. So, all right. So let's get down to those seven helpful tips to building your blog. The first thing you want to make sure is that you choose a niche. So what do I mean by that? You want to make sure that your blog is a very specific topic type content. So you don't want to be all over the place. You don't want to be talking about um, email marketing and then talking about, um, you know, uh, what else? What? So email marketing, I'm like lost my train of thought here with a, a good example. So email marketing and maybe I'm going to talk about taking um, uh, creating event in venues for weddings, completely off topic. You want to make sure that you are honing in on the place 
in your in your business that you are the most knowledgeable. So a niche is really important. Um, I think of, and again, I use Social Media Examiner. They're all about social media. They stay on task with social media. Um, they have LinkedIn, they have Twitter, they have Pinterest, they talk about ads, but it's all around the social media world, right? Then you have like a huge blogging site like Forbes, which was is essentially an online magazine. Now Forbes, although they have many, many different topics, they niche it down. So they have small business, they have leadership, they have um, they have uh, C level um, C level elements to their blog. So you want to really make sure that you are niche orientated. So for example, in my world, what I would consider and kind of how I look at my niche is it's all around digital marketing. So my blogging topics are relative to social media, could social could have social media channels in it. Um, it's really about helping clients uh, being able to learn about digital marketing and tools that can help them grow their business. So services that I provide in that parameter, services that I present on or um, topics that I present are typically what you will find on my blog. And the more niche you are, the more likely you are to um, get a community of followers with that. So one of the things you also want to make sure is that you're doing your due diligence research. I can't stress enough the importance of being able to um, um, the I can't express the importance enough about um, looking at competitors. So I always think that's a great step for you to start as a business owner is to look at competitors, what they're doing, how well they're doing it, and then take from it and learn from it. Do not steal their ideas, do not, but I think that there's always an opportunity for you to gather ideas from that. So research your competitors. I actually don't have that on here as a line item, but I think that's definitely one of those most important things to do. Um, research your audience. If you already have an email list, if you already have clients, ask them what they're interested in, because when you're delivering content marketing, you always need to think about what's in it for them, not what's in it for you as a business owner, what's in it for them. And I use that example of a conversation that I had the other day with somebody where they were putting their sales element and their program before really giving the client or potential clients the value. Always think about what's in it for them. So do your due diligence on researching your audience. Topics. I would encourage you to um, very simple Google Alerts, sign up for a free Google Alerts account, put in some keywords um, and key topics and put, I actually have Google Alerts into um, uh, a separate email where I have kind of some newsletter signups that I do research on. Um, but do your due diligence on topics to get good topic ideas. Um, I can see when blogs pop up. The other thing too that I do for research is I sign up for an email newsletters that I'm interested in in industry. So for example, I am I do sign up for Social Media Examiner because they have a variety of topics that are very similar to things that I would be sharing with my audience. Um, I also sign up for um, email newsletters of other small business owners to see what they're talking about because it might peak ideas. And then also it gives me intel to look at a new topic or something that's happening. Um, and then also you always need to be mindful of keywords. Keywords are what um, helps get you found on Google, helps get your content found. And keyword research is a key to success in terms of search engine optimization. Search engine optimization, aka SEO. So keywords are something that you're going to incorporate into your blog. Um, it's something where you're going to have it in your title, that keyword, you're going to have it in your headlines, you're going to have it in your body, and that's going to help you get found. Um, and there is, you know, this is something where um, I typically do keyword trainings and I'll do a short training um, here this quarter so we can talk a little bit about more about that. But um, keyword research is key to understanding kind of that whole blogging element element and um, getting your content found. So research, plan your content. The biggest thing that I find difficult as a business owner in con dealing with content marketing is 
planning, planning and being consistent, right? So I would encourage you to think about adding a calendar to your already busy calendar, but that you plan for your content. Look at, to plan a month out, look to plan a quarter out um, of different topics that are relative and think about timing, right? Because I know in, um, in every business, there's ebbs and flows of information, right? So it might be a busy time. It might be a, um, a quieter time in your business. But at the end of the day, maybe that can go in line with some of the topics that you deliver in to your audience. So um, other thing is obviously holidays, trends that are in your industry. So I would encourage you to create a content calendar. That is a great tool to, for a business success. And then take your data and your research and incorporate that into that calendar. And then some other things to consider as kind of going to planning your content is think about FAQs. FAQs are great. So those frequently asked questions that customers ask you, or if you're at a BNI group, or if you're having a conversation, those questions that people are asking you about your business or about certain topics, those are great topics. Um, the other thing too, is you can always ask your audience, like I mentioned earlier, ask your audience what they're interested. That's going to also help you to uh, plan accordingly for what people are looking for in your business. Variety. Use a variety of topics. Now, when I say this, I'm not saying like I mentioned about when we talked about niche kind of going from here to here in your niche. Variety means variety in your niche, meaning that you need to have. So one of the things is that analytics play a key role in your blog content. Right. So um, I'm actually doing a, a Google Analytics workshop um, right now. And one of the things that you, we look at is tracking of content. Um, variety helps you to kind of even determine more uh, deeper in the weeds, so to speak, of what people are interested in. So you want to definitely use a variety of topics. Consider, um, consider if you're going to be talking about, you could do it monthly if you wanted to, or you could do, you know, this week we're talking about blogging. Next week we're talking about, um, we're talking about social media management tools. So think about a variety to keep your audience interested and invested into your content. Um, it can definitely also, again, give you a better idea of what they're interested in. Also, you want to consider, so the thing with blogging is that depending upon your industry, so when I do blogs on like Facebook or um, something in the social media arena, it can change pretty rapidly. Um, it's definitely a fluid industry. There's new tools on the horizon. There's new social platforms. Um, so I always have to think about some topics that are evergreen. Why? Because those are things that I can update as, you know, minimally that are going to get good traffic. So like email marketing, there's always new trends in it, but there's also some core foundational elements that are evergreen. And evergreen is great because it's one of those things that I don't have to, I can send people to that content. I can use it as part of my social media content updates and I'm continuing to drive, um, you know, traffic to my website. And some of the best blogs, posts that drive the most traffic are those evergreen blogs. So think variety, but also think evergreen, right? Um, and one of the things that I find, and I'm a small agency, so my bandwidth is limited um, in terms of content writing because we're serving our clients. So a lot of times when there's industry like news flashes that's happening, something happened big, um, uh, a lot of times if you can, that's a great opportunity to get it out to the masses, write a quick blog post and send it out to your audience because that's a great way to show expertise, um, a little bit of variety on a hot topic. Um, so think of variety in ways to choose um, and I, actually, I thought this was root beer. It looks like it's IPAs in this picture. It's beers. It's beers. I, now that I'm looking at that, so sorry. Um, hopefully, everybody's over 21. So <laughs> I thought it was root beers. I don't know when I put that image in there. So anyways, um, think variety. Think uh, evergreen. That's something that's definitely going to help you um, in your business. Think visuals. You always want to incorporate visuals. Visuals, 93% um, and I say this all the time of information um, is seen visually before the text is. So visuals are a really important element to your business. Um, not only on your website, on all of your marketing content, but in your blog as well. Um, I would incorporate visuals, especially if you're doing a how-to highlight 
elements that you want to share with people. Um, you want a blog header, a visual that tells the story. If you can use real images, that's awesome. If you can't, you want to make sure your visuals match your blog content. So you don't want it to be, um, you know, feel spammy. I've been to blog posts where people have used, um, you know, like a dog as the image. And when I get there, it's not about dogs. It's, you know, so make sure you're using visuals that capture your audience to drive them to your blog post to read it, but also to keep them reading in your blog post. The other thing you have to remember about visuals is that you always want to make sure that you are, um, that you are naming convention. Every time you put in a blog post image, always think about SEO. So we talked, mentioned keywords, keywords for searchability, keywords that people are looking for in terms of content. But when you're loading your images into your blog, you want to make sure that you are labeling them with the keywords because that is your image now becomes searchable when you add it to your website. And if you're using the right keywords um, that are relative to your blog, it's another way for you to get found because if you search on Google, you click the image tab, a lot of times images come up. So just keep that in mind. So visuals are key as well. Um, make sure if you are using um, stock photos that you are part of a service that either they're licensed that you have access to use them. So for example, um, Canva, I have a pro account. I have access to images that I can use. They're part of my monthly fee so I can put them online. Do not, do not, I repeat, do not scrape Google for images that and put them on your blog if you don't have access or rights to use them um, because you can run into a little bit of a problem there. There's some questions here. I just want to, um, let's see. John, um, is a blog just a video blog? It is. Um, so a blog is just a video blog. However, um, so you probably would add some text to it. You want to make sure that there's um, at least 350 words underneath it. So it could be a description. It could be a timestamp of um, what that blog is. But for some of us that have a harder time writing blog posts, so blog posts, Blog posts typically minimum is 350 words, but you really want to be upwards of 800 to 1,000 words on a blog post um, regularly. I see a lot of people stick at 600, but um, the more content that you have in that blog post, the better it will rank in search engines. So, um, so a video blog is great because typically you're going to load it to YouTube. Um, you can keep it unlisted if you wanted to, but if you list it, it's also going to come up and search on YouTube. And then you can embed that into your website and have some text added to it. So now you're like dual content, um, which is great. So it's two ways for you to be found YouTube as well as on your blog post. And the other thing too, is in your um in your description on youtube you can have a uh, click back to your blog in general so it is a video blog um john what is the best platform to use for blog creation so great question so uh wordpress has its own blogging feature there's um some other blogging platforms I, if you have a website, John, I would, um, if you have a WordPress website, typically there's, um, depending upon the theme, most themes come with a blog element that you can add to it. Most of these services like Wix or Shopify, they have blog components built in. But if you wanted to do a standalone blog, you could do a WordPress theme that's just just a blog for a uh, standalone. Now, I would encourage you though, that um, if you do have a website that you put it on your website and you add your blog, because the goal is to drive people to one place. And even if they land and think about it this way, when people are doing searches um, in general for specific content um, or topics that they're looking for, they might land on your about page before they land on your home page. So your blog is attached to your website because up above there's navigation to get to other services. And the other thing too is that um, in your blog, you also want to think about, um, you want to think about calls to action. So it brings me to my next question. Um, so let me, um, so calls to actions are really important. And, uh, um, call to actions are really important because within your blog, you can have it, um, first of all, um, the best intent, the best blogs in terms of content delivery, obviously you have your keywords, but having clickable links to other elements on your blog. So other pieces of content. So if you did, so say I wrote a, I wrote, 
put this into a blog post, but it's seven tips for a successful blog, things you need to consider. Um, and then within that, I might, where I have talked about keywords, I could have a clickable, I could have keywords and have it clickable, and it's going to click to a blog post on my site that's up, talking about steps on um, building keywords. So within your kind of linking to other places in your content is great. Um, the other thing too is uh, signups for your email, clear call to action. You always want to make sure they're clickable. Um, check your links in your blog. But really at the end of the day, um, your goal is to, sorry, my thing is being persnickety here. Oh, um, uh, the end of the day, having it on your website has huge advantages of it, but of course you can have it stand alone. Um, Bob, thoughts on drop in blog for use on website, drop in blog. Um, uh, Bob, is that a tool or I'm, I'm not sure. Um, I'm actually not sure what drop in blog, um, is because there's definitely lots of different softwares out there that you can use. I think as long as you can attach it to your website and have it in the navigation and it's gonna bring people to your page. Um, but the nice thing about having a blog with your theme and all of that is it sits on the same domain, right? Or you can also have subdomains that kind of um, are attached to that domain, but you want to make sure that they're interconnected together. So what do I mean by that? Um, so like, for example, I have touchingclients.com. There is, um, if I had actually a long time ago, I have this WordPress blog that I was doing for like personal stuff. And the URL um, was like wordpress.com and then my blog name. So that's not great for searchability. Even if I put that on my website, it wouldn't help with my SEO. Drop in blog does what you said. Oh, okay. So it's, um, um, I'm going to look at, let me see here. Uh, drop in blog. Ah, Oh, it's like a, it's kind of like a um, integration. Interesting. Interesting. So here is, I'm going to drop in here in the chat. Um, drop in blog. Thanks for sharing that, Bob. Um, I think that, I think that, um, you know, looking at it, kind of uh, looking at it and I can um, share this tab instead. So this is drop in blog. So um, basically it looks like you can embed it into your website um with some code which is great um and what does it integrate with it integrates ah interesting so you can inter integrate it into your emails you can integrate it into um into different web elements it looks like so, yeah, I think it, I mean, I think as long as you're driving traffic to your domain, I don't, I guess what I'd like to see, here's some examples. Um, let's see. So, this is their blog. And it's still sitting. I, you guys can't see the URL on here, um, but it's still sitting on, um, it's your, on the URL. So, I think it's fine. Um, yeah, like community and they have blog and then, yeah, I, and it looks exactly like, um, their website. So I think it, I think it's definitely, it's definitely something to consider, um, if it's easy for you to set up, right. And actually this would be a great tool that, um, I would say if you were, um, if you already had your website built and didn't want to spend a lot of money redoing it, I think that would be a great tool. Plus, I'd love to see the email piece in action. I'm going to take a look at that a little bit more. So thanks so much for sharing that. All right. Another thing big, big is consistency, right? Um, so you want to set yourself up for success. Uh, Google does love new content. So the more that you feed it new content from your website, that helps with your getting found on Google. Um, you know, but at the end of the day, you want to set yourself up for success. If you can blog once a week, obviously that's going to help with your searchability. If you can't, maybe every two weeks um, or once a month. But your goal is to blog frequently um, as much as you can and try to get on a schedule. And that's why planning and putting it on the calendar is helpful. And that way you can plan ahead on the content that you're trying to deliver. Um, it's something where 
you definitely, um, you know, you want to uh, have a variety of those topics and then the consistency, because what happens is just like your emails that Pete, you send, people get um, used to seeing them on specific days. So what's nice is about is a lot of these blog platforms allow you to write your blog and you can get ahead and you can have it, actually have it scheduled to be published, which is nice because if you have some free time, we all have free time, right? <laughs> uh, if you have some free time, you can write ahead and then it can automatically schedule for you. So that's that's a very cool element. So consistency is key uh, to success of your content being found. And once you have your blog um, kind of elements in place, the big thing you need to do is promotion. The thing about a blog is not it's set it and forget it, write it, sit it on your website. You wanna make sure that you put it out in your email. You wanna make sure that you are putting it out in your social media content. You wanna make sure that if you are on Twitter, AKA X, that you're tweeting it several times. I would encourage you to drop your blog content, especially on social channels, more than once. Um, a lot of times uh, people have great success with just running um, nominal budget Facebook ads for your content, driving them to that post and then clicking to your website with a targeted audience. So that's a great way to get some organic traffic um, on a very short budget to uh, get people to your website. But promotion is key. So remember that email, um, make sure that it's in an email, make sure that you are posting it regularly, create a series. Um, and kind of one of the easiest things you can do is when you're planning your um, blog posting and you wrote your blog, that's a great time. You have your visual that you created for your blog post, set up some social images and schedule it. Then you know it's all ready to go. And if you are using a scheduling tool, just like scheduling your blog, you can schedule those to go out at the same time. So um, promotion is key to your success of getting people there. Um, it's not a set it and forget it module. And let's talk a little bit about AI. AI is definitely one of those things these days that we have to consider in our marketing strategies. AI is a great tool for what I, what I believe are this, research, research on topics, um, help with titles. They can give you some great suggestions on titles. Um, sometimes I'll look for specific uh, quotes or facts. Now, keep in mind, some of this is a little bit older that you're finding, but it helps give me direction. It also helps give me direction on ideas. I would encourage you never to copy a blog post that you had chat GPT write for you. Um, you want to make sure that whatever you use AI to help make it easier for you to create content, that you then take it back and you, know, you humanize it. You put it into your own words. You massage it. You put your voice on it. Um, but I think AI has some great capabilities to make it easier to create content in a much more timely fashion. Um, some people might disagree with me. I do think that um, you know it helps with social media posts. I use it um, and then I just take it and I, I change the wording. I put it in so it sounds more like my own voice. But AI technology can be a great, great tool when you're creating blogs. Um, some that I have used, I've used ChatGPT. Um, I've used, I actually right now I'm using a tool called Write Sonic. Um, it does article writing, it does blog posts, but what I do is then I take it, the, what, I, what I like about it is it has this beta tester where it tests the SEO on a keyword. And that I really like um, because then once I take, so once I take it out of there, um, I, go through, I write, um, add content to it. I put more of my own polishing touches on it, my own voice. And then I put it into um, my blog and then I optimize it for SEO. And what's nice is what I'm finding is that it's less optimization for SEO that I have to do once I put it into my blog. So it's definitely helped me with some of those things. Now, I've had it where it's gone the complete opposite. And to be honest with you, it's given me crap. So this is AI as a computer, it's not human. You are the human brain behind it. That's why making sure that whatever topic you're deciding to talk about, that you do your research. Um, you know, recently, I know uh, two weeks ago, I did the Gmail Yahoo changes. I definitely used AI to help with some of that. But that being said, um, I went out and I took articles that they, they 
so this tool in particular will pull, if I put a topic, it'll pull like 10 blog posts. So it, it helps eliminate some of that research. And then I went in and I read these blog posts and I went to Gmail and Yahoo and all of these things. Um, and it definitely has, it helped with minimizing time. So I would have you uh, take a look at that. Yes, it's right Sonic. Um, let me, I can drop it in there. Uh, uh, right here. There you go. Um, right, Sonic. Uh, so yeah, I think it's a great tool. Um, AI is definitely helpful in time management, um, but I do uh, believe that human touch and everything needs to be polished in on your post. So I think at the end of the day, don't overthink it. You know, today was really about tips to things you need to know in creating blogs, tips to be on top of. Um, but I think, you know, there were some great examples. Bob shared a great example, dropinblog.com. A lot of these tools that you have to create a blog on your website, they're already there. What your job, they're already in place with where the image goes, kind of what the, um, what the, um, kind of what the dropped, what, uh, where the content is placed, sorry. Um, your job is to fill it with content that's going to be searchable. So the other thing too, is that I would encourage you to really, really take a look at SEO. Um, and I will, like I said, I'll have a training on a small training on uh, keywords. And then also maybe I'll do the structure of a blog. Cause I think that's always a good one of kind of where those keywords go in, but um, don't overthink it. The big thing is, is you want to set yourself up for success. We have a lot on our plates as business owners. We're busy working in our business. And then we also have to work on our business. And so if you are going to start blogging or, or you are blogging, Blogging, it's okay to start with once a month. Increase that as time goes on and you're using tools for better productivity. Productivity, it will help you in the long run. So I hope that is helpful. I appreciate all of you coming today and I'm happy to help you. Um, here is, uh, you're welcome to sign up for a free consultation if you'd like me to take a uh, talk about something that you're working on that you might need support with. There is a QR code there and I'm also going to drop it here. Um, uh, let's see. All right. All right. Um, all right, my friends, I appreciate all of your help today and your questions. Um, and is there any other questions? I'll just double check here. Um, I think I got them all. Uh, we talked about blog creation, uh, Bob, great um, share, right, Sonic. All right, my friends, I think that I got them all. Let me stop sharing my screen. And sorry, I'm using two screens here, so I'm not really looking away. I'm looking at you, but <laughs> all right. Okay, my friends, you make it a great Friday. Thanks so much for your time. And I will look forward to um, seeing you next week. And actually, um, if you have not, I'd encourage you to, um, um, I'd encourage you to know, John, that's a great topic, how to use Loom. Um, I'd encourage you to visit our website at touchingclients.com, sign up for our email. Um, if you have not, um, and here you go. You can sign up for email there. Um, and I will be sending out the new topics. Um, I actually am working on them today. So, um, but Loom is a great topic. I will include keywords. And actually last week, because um, I was not feeling well, we didn't have our Facebook. So that'll continue also into February. All right, my friends, make it a fabulous day. Uh, have a great weekend. Stay warm, stay safe, uh, stay cool wherever you are in the world. And I'll look forward to seeing you guys next Friday. Have a great day.